Hey guys, I'm Gaspatian. You heard me slip my tongue last time, it's only going to get worse from here. Last time, if you remember, we designed a plane, and we flew that plane. Successfully after a couple of tries. That test flight netted us some science that we're not going to use for now, and it will also net us the ability to perform other contracts nearby. Uh, now, some of these call for some things that we cannot really achieve like right now, like uh, this, for instance, calls us to be high in space and perform a temperature scan there. That is impossible for us. Uh, instead, we'll take that one. That one called for us to fly over the water, over the tundra, and also splash down on Kerbin. Now, last time we decided that uh, the runway is a death trap. So we'll steer clear of the runway. Uh, instead, we're going to launch on uh, the patch of grass nearby, and uh, this launch will take us going uh, straight over the tundra almost immediately, because the tundra is obviously situated 22 degrees uh, north of the equator, we all know that. Uh, anyways, to reach the water biome, we have to head out quite a bit into the actual water, and then for ending up splash down, I, I, I opt to actually land the plane on ground rather than uh, in the water. Now for some live commentary on the whole situation. Um, but anyways, we're down to about 53 meters per second at a surface altitude and I'm, I'm going to be fine with that. I thought. Okay, so let's let's kill our our trim. Okay, that's another part of the aircraft gone. Gone, and uh, do we have an even brake torque? Is that what's causing this? I mean, I can't steer this. I imagine, and it went away when we. I mean, both have thir 30 max, but yeah, that was weird. Um, so yeah, again, that wasn't uh, an issue with the design, that was just me totally screwing up the landing. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how incoherent I sound? Anyways, we lost most of the plane, but we're not giving up just because of that. I mean, who needs an engine to get into the water? At least we don't, because it's a downward slope. Uh, now, in this downward slope, especially with the poor brake torque that we have already experienced... Uh, well, there goes another piece of the plane. I was just about to say that we want to adjust our surface velocity to, to keep that from happening. Uh, because if we lose our scientific instrumentation, then uh, we cannot actually complete the mission. So we're going to be very gentle in approaching the water here, taking a lot of time. But you all see this in time warp anyway, so who cares. Um, so, we finally arrive at the, at the beachhead. And here we're going to be very gentle in rolling down, perhaps too gentle, because it ends up taking us to a point where we bounce up and down from being splashed down or not. So actually getting that science turns out to be quite difficult. We also tried to get our EVA report, but that turns out to be impossible because we had stored one, so we have to discard that one, uh, preferring to take the splashdown EVA report because it has a higher value. So yeah, we're bounce bouncing up and down like a low rider, but there's nothing else we can really do, so we're going to recover the craft. This gave us more science, and uh, we're going to attempt more contracts, because uh, science is a drug to us by now. Anyways, we're looking at this contract. It calls for us to go by the shores, the highlands, and the mountains. Now, you may note that, well, we haven't really seen any mountains nearby. And, uh, well, nearby here will be a relative term. As you can see, there appears to be a mountain to the northwest, and we're going to head over there. And uh, now, more than ever, I think you should appreciate the wonders of Time Warp. 
because this mission took quite a while and uh, I mean I could present the live commentary I did during it but oh lord would you be bored. Uh, this is as we said a very competent glider it's also very fuel efficient so there's no real danger of us running out of fuel on the, even on this long term mission. We're going in for a slightly more successful landing. I guess I spoiled the results of that by not uh, slowing down the time warp. Uh, and that's our highland science. Now we're going to get the mountain science. We're going to actually land in the mountains. And you can see that we have an, in an incredible glide capacity, even though we're three kilometers above the surface of Kerbin's waters. We could now opt to just head over to the nearest shoreland there, take our final science and uh, be done with it. Because, well, right there is a shore. But no, I opt to fly all the way back. Uh, this mission was conducted in the middle of the night and I guess I thought that, well, I had nothing better to do, like sleeping, no. That's insane, why would I do that? Anyways, fun thing to note as well on this mission is how uh, after reaching 4 kilometers, the helmet sort of just popped on, but we could disable that as soon as we're under 4 kilometers. And then, well, you can see exactly how bored I am because I start doing these, uh, these spins and barrel rolls and whatnot to, to keep time going. Anyways, uh, we're coming in for a landing here. We have to perform some crazy maneuvers to actually slow down. Air brakes will be a very appreciated upgrade for future planes. Let's just say that. So, more science. What are we going to use that for, you ask? Well, there are three things on our mind right now. First of all is basic science, which will unlock the Science Junior, which will complement our Mr. Goo observations quite nicely. Then we have early command modules, which will allow us to do some manned flights, and advanced rocketry, which will actually perform perform way better than what we have right now. Anyways, we opt for basic science because we figure if we're going to launch something into space, we need a satellite network to keep in touch with it. And now, back to the point we made in episode 1. Everything in this series is subject to change. And I guess after that long marathon flight, we decided that now we're going to let it progress a bit faster just to get us out of this situation we're in right now. So what we do is alter the cost of buying upgrade points in Kerbal construction time. This uh, is, uh, well, to give us an actual choice rather than forcing us down a path, uh, we, we decide that we want to go for a value that's uh, going to balance the cost of, uh, of investing in um, shorter construction times and faster research rates versus actually spending that science or money on uh, actual projects. As it is otherwise you would only really spend money and science on uh, upgrade points here if you had no other use for it. But um, that's, that's really not flavorful in any sense. So we opt to go for 4 science per upgrade point and 10,000 funds per upgrade point. Uh, this will allow us to raise our development uh, speed quite significantly using funds that we currently have in abundance. And then we time warp and we time warp and we time warp because now we want survivability if we are to complete the next contracts we have in line which are the manned altitude records of 18 kilometers, which we have had sitting in our queue for a while, as well as orbit and recovery. Uh, both of these, of course, called for survivability to bring down our craft safely. So, without f much further ado, we're going to design... Oh, I don't even remember which one we go for first. It looks like we're going for the manned altitude record. Now, there are two designs I could go for here. Uh, as far as completing this contract that we have of achieving an altitude of 24 kilometers. This one that we're going for now, the basic rocket approach, is the more cowardly one of the two. We could also design something that looks like an X-plane, where we have a well, either a solid rocket booster or a hybrid rocket booster as our core for something that takes off from uh, 
the wrong way or well as we have seen in this series the pa patch of grass nearby we're going to call it the x1 even though it doesn't look like the x1 because uh, we feel better about ourselves if we say well we flew the x1 today and yeah we're going to add some science because we haven't been to the launch pad with uh, our mr goose we haven't been to our launch pad manned at all actually we're going to add an antenna in case we need to broadcast our crew reports etc because well everything can and um, probably will go south on this launch but we're going to leave that to past me to document so we're situated at the launch pad we haven't launched a crewed vessel from here before so we'll take that we'll observe that we'll keep that data for for recovery and we'll set it to um, lock up and we'll fire we'll immediately get a crew report we'll get a mystery goo observation and uh, so far so good now we just need to watch our app apps and uh, hope it gets above 24 kilometers I could probably have uh, made the thrust weight a bit higher but I didn't really want to think about the aerodynamic effects here oh yeah look now Mechjab is freaking out a bit over the control surfaces which we're getting some cosine losses we're getting a lot of cosine losses uh, but um, our app apps keeps on climbing and our time to app apps as well so um, I'm not overly concerned about that and uh, these um, these cosine losses is because MechJab can't handle the non-instant uh, deflection that comes with uh, Ferrum Aerospace. So we'll just keep this going and we hit our app webs of 34 kilometers. And indeed, here we go. Upper atmosphere. It was apparently already at 21. We'll transmit that crew report just in case so now we have charged up on the science and uh, you know what turn that off let's see how how well this th this thing flies so standard control settings we want you to not be a active for roll we don't want you to be active for pitch we barely want you to be active for you uh, you uh, all right they are mirrored so they are not separated at all or separable at all so we can't disable these one by one it's going to be very hard to ever get this to fly in any sort of sensible manner. But it was just a thought. Oh, that rascal and his crazy ideas. Anyways, since our grand schemes of actually controlling this craft were foiled, we're going to dump the service module or booster stage or whatever you might call it this not being a proper rocket the proper terminology probably doesn't apply either we're going to see it sail away merrily and uh, we're going to test our parachute does it work as advertised because uh, that's not always a guarantee we find but it seems to perform uh, amicably uh, maybe slowing us down a bit too much but that's what time warp is for so uh, we touch down, we recover the vessel, and we decide that with parachutes working, we're going to try to recover something from orbit. So we design this ba very basic return capsule. And uh, meanwhile, while our scientists are working on that project, uh, Juhani there decides to commandeer a plane because he's decided 
There's water nearby, and well, everyone knew that, but he's saying, I can land on the water, and everyone's saying, no, you can't. But he's going to try and prove them wrong, and that's going to be neat. Anyways, the design principles about, behind this capsule is that we have retro rockets to bring us, bring us or, our orbit down once we've actually gotten up into orbit. That way we can uh, recover the vessel by doing a, an air brake. It's going to be very much alike what you do on a real mission, except we're technologically limited in this. Also, we're limited for what the launch ca pad can handle, we're limited on what rockets we can employ, we're limited on very much. But we're going to try to make the best of this, and we call it the Recover. Uh, stylishly ab abbreviated, of course. So anyways, it's time to leave the mic to my past self again. We're running into the limits of uh, our upgraded launch pad. Of course, because uh, the design is just bonkers. Also, what has happened here? Which part are you part of? Part of that one. We also seem to be <coughs> we also seem to be stuck in the ground, and our staging is completely wrong. Because why would I fix that? That makes no sense. So those will trigger at the same time, and those will open up. I want to open those up afterwards after we fire the second stage. And I want my smart ass up, I want my surface lock, I want that to be executing. We're tilting a lot. Hopefully we can fix that. Rather hopefully Mechjab can fix that, so execute that. We're not flying so we don't need a joystick, we don't need the... the uh, precision avionics. Instead we'll just try to launch this. And no. So it turns out that our rocket engineers decided that the engine belts shouldn't follow the laws of physics. And this is of course always a danger when you hire megalomaniac lunatics to put your stuff in space. To remedy the fact that the engine belts were stuck in the ground, launch clamps will be added on the next launch. And we just hope that the hovering engine bell was a one-time occurrence. Now, uh, looking at it in the VAB, that doesn't look promising, but maybe if we just switch to... Uh, well, if we just replace them with identical SRBs, maybe things will not be the same. So, we adjust the craft, we attach the uh, requ requisite parachutes, we, uh, of course, scale them properly, we set the, all the configs to make uh, stage recovery happy. We attach the launch clamps, which should probably solve our problems. And we're a go for another try, I guess. Maybe. Hmm. Well, what's interesting is it that it seems to be consistent with the direction it's offset in. What I'm questioning is where the center thrust will be. Because wh while it's visually over here, I still have a lingering hope that the center of thrust will be straight down through, through the center of the rocket. And I mean, we'll know right away if that's the case or not. And I'm actually going to risk a launch here. Even though it's looking very sketchy at this moment. And we'll throttle them up all the way even though it's solid rocket boosters for now. And we'll go. Nope. Nope. I mean, we're fine so far. But uh, we're committed to this. This is how it ends. It's 
so one piece of the fairing survived. Beautiful. So as we can tell, past me is a purveyor of fine arts, in this case, ballet. Now, maybe this bug is just intermittent. Maybe we can uh, try to launch the same craft again and not have the engine bell sitting right where it's at right now. Apparently we cannot. So we're going to recover that craft. We're going to start performing some modifications to the craft and maybe that will take care of it. What modifications? Well, you'll see it on the launch pad. So I figure maybe that's enough of an explanation. Anyways, you honey is still trying to land the very competent glider. Trying to perform a pre precision landing in that glider turned out to be quite the hassle. And as you can see, he's still going at it. So let's ask past self if, uh, if this new design is any more competent or if we should wait for advanced rocketry. No. And I really wish I knew why it did that. Because yeah, there's not much to do, is there? I'm going to have to recover the vessel. I will note that this bug seems to be intermittent, and thus far I haven't found a lasting solution. So if you're experiencing this, I'm sorry I'm out of luck on this. Uh, instead, we opt to wait for new booster technology, in this case, liquid booster technology. And that comes with uh, some bonuses and some drawbacks. Now, the bonus is of course the ISP. The liquid engine is way more efficient, which means we have to carry less fuel up into orbit, etc. Uh, the drawback, however, is uh, it lacks thrust of its own, so we're going to have to provide it with some side boosters initially to get off the ground. And um, it also lacks any gimballing. I mean, we had 0.5 gimballing on the solid boosters, but compared to no gimballing, that's still a heaven sent for steering. So we're going to need the fins to perform uh, any maneuvers and we're going to need the retro boosters and it, we're going to need a lot of parts with our part limit being 30 parts. So we're performing some further modifications to our craft and um, hopefully this craft will finally fulfill the contract that we have been struggling with for a while now. Not because of our, any of our own faults, but because bugs are bugs. Anyways, if we look at you, honey, he seems to finally have committed to a landing and is going, now going to taxi for quite a while until reaching the waterfront. Um, meanwhile, our engineers perform some final touch-ups on the design and put it on the launch pad. So, we're on the launch pad, we don't seem to have any engine bells where they don't belong, we don't clip the launch pad, so we just decide to launch. Now hopefully we will get to orbit. Uh, to get to orbit we know from previous experience that we need to stare sideways. And here is the first problem with this design. Remember, this is the Reliant engine. It has no gimballing. So our only means of staring are these three fins on the side. But as we get higher and higher into the atmosphere, the fins, well, they provide less and less staring. So we almost completely flip, up, flip over there, but we manage to right ourselves once we get the SRB firing. And this is a three and a half stage design, uh, which means that on top of this stage, we're also going to have to fire a second stage of SRB goodness. But we forgot the decoupler. Now, this was a ma very easy mistake to make considering we were struggling with part count, but uh, yeah, I should really have foreseen this. Anyways, now is the time to abort the mission. And we decide to do it spectacularly. So, we're going to destroy the craft as well as the payload booster. 
That couldn't have gone better, could it? I mean, even if we succeeded with our mission, I don't think we would have been as pleased with the results. So, we will call that a test flight, quote unquote. And maybe we should reconsider the design. Maybe the liquid booster wasn't the Hail Mary that we needed. So we, we decide to right our wrongs, because now we are up against one common enemy here, and that is the part count. Uh, if we're going to need side boosters, we're probably not going to be uh, finding it in our part count budget to also include proper staging, proper separation, things that we saw was a problem with the previous flight. So we right these wrongs, we again correct for all uh, all of our stage recovery needs, we hopefully add a decoupler. Come on, past me. That was like the major issue here. Yeah, adjust the height of that decoupler. Yeah, finally. Because uh, without that, well, the craft was a disaster. Anyways. Yuhani, on the other hand, has been a splendid success, even if it took him a while, and he managed to get that hard fought for data. Now, our engineers... Well, we saw that problem before, so this is again a case of us not learning about... about our limitations from past mistakes. So, uh, luckily enough, we are able to recover the vessel as it writes it's, itself on the fins. So we'll add launch clamps, which of course eat into our height budget. So we'll have to adjust our top stages to be more squat. And then, we're going to launch two rockets. Now, why would you launch two rockets if one of them could succeed? Well, that's sort of a spoiler in that one of these do not succeed. And again, I'm going to blame someone else other than my own. So, what's happened here is that, as people among you who are familiar with remote tech might know, uh, there is a omnidirectional basic antenna that is configured to be always on, that is pretty useful for f doing early launches. Uh, now, in my install, for some reason, it had lost the configuration that kept it always on. So if you see to the lower left corner there on that launch, while the upper right corner launch is a splendid success, the lower left one, which was the first one, well, we lost communications midway, so we couldn't activate our chutes, we couldn't get to orbit, and yeah. So for the second launch, we didn't actually perform any corrections to the craft, all we did was activate the antenna prior to launch. Now, uh, we'll blame that on some uh, bug in the cathode software from whatever tube computer our early scientists are running. But uh, yeah, this, this episode as a whole has been one of many frustrations. Uh, finally, in the long line of bugs, we noticed that we aren't ablating our ablator. And this is also one of those intermittent bugs that I've found very hard to replicate. In that sometimes we do lose up later on re-entry in this series, and sometimes we don't. Anyways, we finally ma managed to touch down and complete our contract. Next time we will hopefully encounter fewer bugs. I'll see you guys then.